In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to design a wildlife badge slash logo in Photoshop. So, hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny, and yeah, thanks again for tuning in. So, first of all, I hope you guys all enjoyed this little Christmas gift that I had for you guys with all the shapes and everything which we had in the last tutorial. So, yeah, let's also get right away into the tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to design this super simple badge slash logo here. Again, a wildlife exhibition logo with a little bit of a deer and two, three different fonts. So first of all, I'm gonna work again here just on the background, show you guys in a few seconds how I did and how I achieved this type of background here. Let's actually switch that off. So this is a little bit of blurring here. I can actually start right away with it. So this is basically what the background looks like originally. So this I've also got from graphicstock.com. Okay, so that was the start. What I did then is again underneath I have a black layer here. Now if you're completely new to canvas sizes and all the stuff, have a look on the channel. There is a whole playlist teaching you how to get to this point. Okay, so I've added then again the first layer here which is basically this background layer. I've then applied just to get again a little bit of blur and took the opacity down. Let me show you guys quickly this. So this is actually the before. I took this down to like 40% so the dark layer that's underneath will shine through a little bit and the logo on top if it's white will stand out even more. But now obviously it's standing out not that much because it's not blurred the background so I've added a bit of blur here which I show regularly in the tutorials how to do the blur. It's again a smart object also over here so very simple I can double tap and just get back into the gaussian blur effect over here. Super simple now I can change the pixels and also the radius of the blurness hit OK and the background is blurred. It's super simple just go to filter blur gaussian blur. I guess most of you guys know already about this. Then second step that I did here I want to do this over again just to show you guys what I actually did here with my little curve. So I'm going to delete this layer completely and this last one as well. So once we are here what I did now is obviously I don't do these steps before I do the logo. I do them after I do the logo. But let me show it to you anyways. So I'm going to go to adjustments. I'm going to go to a curves adjustment layer. And then first of all what I do is just go to this point here. Put an anchor point and just drag the blacks down a bit to get a bit of contrast. Then an anchor point over here to brighten again the highlights just a little bit. And now I go all the way down in the left corner and just flatten the blacks completely. As you guys can see I can do this a bit more drastic so you guys can see how all the blacks flatten up really heavy. So I'm not going to take it too much somewhere around here. Let's have a look before and after. Great. So again with the design this is obviously a preference thing and I'm running quite quickly through this so try this at home and if you like this then push it up or keep it down. Okay. Then, last step that I still wanted to do is just have a bit of a color on top of this, a little bit of an orange. So what I'm going to do is go all the way down here and create a new solid color adjustment layer. Again, solid color. I'm going to go to somewhere a little bit of orangey here, orange brown. This is completely random now. I have not written this down. So let's have a look. Maybe this. You guys can also get the values here. I'm going to hit OK. And first of all, take this to color. So the blending option here should, should just be color. Okay, now it's obviously quite strong. So let's just take the opacity all the way down. Yeah, even further, say like 16, 15%. You can have a look and play around with that a little bit, whatever suits you. I just wanted to get away a little bit more from this blue look and get a little bit more into this brown warm look for the design. Okay, so that's basically just the background. Again, now let's start fresh with the design on top. Okay, first of all, I'm going to turn off the design group here. I'm going to go to view, new guides, as I usually do, 50% for horizontally and vertically as well. If you watch my tutorials every week, you will notice that I do this all the time. So you don't need to do it, but I just like to do it. It's a preference thing. Okay, first of all, what I want to do is write here wildlife. So I'm going to take the text tool, make a random selection, capital letters. I'm just going to write wildlife over here. 
select everything with command A. I'm working with a Mac. If you're a Windows person, please press control when I say command. So again, command A, selecting everything or use your mouse. And now I'm first of all going to select the right font for this. So again, for me it's healthy to Kanoya as well. I'm going to stick with bold also over here, the options. Bold and I'm going to go with the biggest size. So something around 40, 35, let's try that. Okay, 35, that's good. And now I'm going to work a little bit more with my tracking in the character box. So the character box over here on the right hand side, if you don't have this, please go to window and select character box over here. This box will appear. A lot of you subscribers out there ask me about this. Okay, so next step that I'm going to do is take it to zero. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more down. Okay, a little bit up again, say like a minus 50. Let's try that. And that looks good so far. So the edges aren't so far apart. Okay, so pretty happy so far with this. The only thing that I still want to do is just narrow this font a little bit more. So I'm going to go to the vertical scale over here and take this down a bit more. Let's try 80%, 82, 84. Some, yeah, I think 82% is good enough. Okay, accept it. Take the move tool. I'm going to move it somewhere here into the center. We still have to change and rearrange that again. So the next step is again now also to write expedition. I'm going to take again the text tool, make a big selection here, and write expedition. Also in small letters, and again I'm going to select all of this and select a new font. Now you guys can also find this font down below in the description from Wildlife Expedition and from the deer. I'm going to show and link everything in the description. Okay, so this fold font is called Bira Personal or something. Let's try if I can find it. Here we go. Bira Personal Use Only. So again, you're not allowed to use this for commercial purposes, but for your own personal stuff, you're allowed to do this. You can find them again on thefont.com. Okay, let's take the font maybe to like a 14, 15 would be nicer. Okay, my tracking also need to work on that. So again, to the character box, let's switch that back to zero. And yeah, I think I'm happy so far with this. Let's have a look here. Again, the vertical scale also needs to be z or 100%. Let's write 100. Great, now it looks better. Okay, so expedition, there we go. We can place this now again somewhere here into the center. And lastly, we're going to create a deer. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking, so where are you getting the deer from? Is that a brush? Is that a shape again? No, it's actually also a font that you guys can find again in the description down below. I've added again everything for you there. And here it is as well. Deers, that's what it calls. So basically I'm just going to press D on the keyboard in order for me to get the right deer and also make that a bit bigger again. Maybe double the size, 30 to 40 or something like that. Maybe 30, that's good enough. So guys, you can also find that again on the font.com. It's pretty awesome. And also if you zoom in the edges or if you blow this font up, the edges are always really good with fonts as well, even on these little shapes and objects. Okay, next up that I still want to do is maybe going to do it later, the synths and also the the year that I still want to add. First of all, what I want to add now is maybe just the triangle. So again, I'm going to go to my shape library. And remember, if you are still new till January, you can download all of my shapes here. In the last tutorial, I did a link to my t shape library where you can download this. Okay, so now I'm going to go through and just select a triangle shape that I'm trying to find here in my shape library. And there we go. I've got a solid triangle over here. I'm going to double tap on that and hold shift on the keyboard now. So it's equally expanding. I'm mentioning that every week. Okay, somewhere size like this. I'm not sure yet if that is the right size. And I've placed here my shape as a new layer. Okay, sorry for that. Now, what I want to do is first of all, take the strokeness away. So we just have a transparent and again now also with fill transparent. And now I'm going to go back to stroke and select white over here. And we're going to up the widthness of that so that it's get it. Let's to make it a bit thicker. Say something around four or five. Again, I'm doing this bit quicker. 
Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna press Command Shift H to hide these little outlines. Okay, so they irritate me a bit. They always do. Then I'll go to Edit, Transform, and say Flip Vertically. Great. So now there we have it. I'm gonna move it a little bit over here, and I can see it's a little bit too big my triangle. So that's not a problem. It still has a smart object here under your shape, so you can still transform it without stretching it or breaking it or anything. So again, I'm going to press Command T, you get back to the transform mode, and I'm just literally going to hold Shift, so it's equally expanding again, and I'm just going to take this corner and make it a little bit smaller. Let's do that again, like so, and I'm just having a look here at the W and at the I, and maybe even a bit more. Okay, and I'm going to actually stretch it now in a little bit, something like that. Yeah, and I think I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to accept it, take it down here. And now, first step that I want to do is make a duplicate of this layer because I know sometimes I like destroy the triangle, then I have to do all the process again. If I make a duplicate of this, I can just quickly call it up again. So again, Command J, duplicate of this. So again, this is now, say, the T2 for triangle 2. And I'm going to take this layer and move it all the way down to the bottom and just block it away. So if I, in case I need it, I have it down here. If not, then I can just delete it later on. So now I have shape one, which is basically our triangle. I'm gonna hit, well, before I hit right click, let's actually take D, which is the deer and expedition. And I'm just gonna move that up a little bit. Okay, and also with my cursors. And I can see that the proportions are all right. So that's okay. You guys can obviously take a bit more time when you do this. Great, so let's take shape layer, hit right click on the layer, go to rasterize the layer, and now we can basically cut out things out of our triangle. So again, take the uh, rectangular marking tool, I'm gonna make a nice big selection over here, and move it a little bit, and hit delete on shape one layer. Press command D to get out of the selection again, and you guys can see we have cut out that really nicely now. Wildlife is out. Okay, so again, I can see it's a little bit too big, the triangle still. I'm going to press Command T quickly and just make this a little bit smaller. Move this around a bit. Okay, so I've stretched this now a little bit. Obviously, when you do it, play a little bit with the design until you are happy with this. Great, next step that I still want to do is go back to my shape library again, custom shape tools, and over here at the bottom, I have created some mountains recently, so I'm gonna use these mountains again. Now, if you have my shape library, you will also have this shape um, in your Photoshop right now. I'm gonna press Z to zoom in a little bit. Press U on the keyboard again, get back to the shapes. Hold Shift on the keyboard, equally expanding, and I'm just going to make a rough sized mountain here. Again, first of all, fill. We're gonna choose a white fill over here and stroke should be none. Great. Okay, hit enter there, command shift H to hide the outlines. And I'm literally just gonna move that into the center. Yeah, let's zoom out, let's have a look. It's a little bit big, I would say, but you guys get the point. You have to create a shape there. Then let's take the text tool. I'm gonna make a nice big selection here and we're gonna write since. Okay, I've written since, you guys can't see it because it's way too big. First of all, what we need to do is again change here to a new font. For that, I'm going to work again with Helvetica Neue. You guys can also find that in the description down below. I hope I mentioned that for the first wildlife. So again, it's both in the description here. Um, Helvetica Neue, and I'm just going to take the size all the way down, maybe to like a five, six. Six looks good to me. I'm also going to go with bold, so it just fits a bit better with wildlife. And I'm going to up the tracking a little bit more. So say like 400 or something. Okay, that's good. I'm going to accept it, take the move tool and actually just move it down here. I'm also going to go back to my rulers here. If you guys don't have the ruler here at the top, go to view and select rulers here. So you have the rulers here. They're always very handy when you're designing. So go to the rulers with your move tool and you drag down a guideline. And you can place it somewhere over here. Let's maybe move since. I'm going to press Z as well. Zoom in a bit. Move tool again. Place it right here at the mountain. Then I'm going to select again since from the layers. And move that out. Zoom out a little bit. Let's have a look. Since over there. 
Yeah, that's actually alright. I'm gonna make a duplicate of that with Command J. Windows people again, press Control now. So Control J for you for Command Command J. Sorry for Mac Command J. And I'm just gonna move it all the way over here. Okay, with the cursors, press T on the keyboard, get back into the text tool, and I'm gonna make a random date, 1902. Okay, and accept it. So again, I can see that 1902 is a little bit far off to the right. A little bit to the left here. Let's also move our whole design a little bit. Great. So first thing that's irritating me now are these guidelines. So back to view, clear the guidelines so I can see everything a bit better. So it's always good now to zoom in a little bit, to see it a bit from a distance and get a feeling for it. And then you can zoom in a bit again. So I'm going to go press the text tool again, T on the keyboard, select expedition. And I'm going to move that up with my cursors just a little bit and the deer as well. Great, so again, lastly, you can go back to view and again, new guide, etc., to create and find exactly your center point. What I still want to do also here is quickly take wildlife, expedition and all the different layers that we've just created. Press Command G and we're gonna put this again into a new design group here. I'm gonna write design two. So I actually know this is my previous and this is my second to show you guys the before and after. I'm gonna now take the whole group and just move that into the center. Let's quickly go to view, new guide again, horizontally. Yeah, quite a schlep to do this. I should actually do some actions with this. Okay, somewhere like this, maybe it's centered now. You guys get the point. Take a bit more time when you do this. Clear guides, I'm gonna zoom in a bit and show you guys quickly the before and after. So this is how I created the logo. Again, here's my before. It's a little bit more controlled and a little bit more spaced evenly with everything. Watch out for that as well. So it feels right when you look at it. Again, this is our version. I think this is not looking too well yet. Maybe I should have taken the wildlife down a little bit on the triangle like I did previously here. So we have a bit more space in the top. But yeah, you guys get the point of how to create this. I hope you guys have loads of fun when creating this. Don't forget again, you can also still download my shape library in the last tutorial. And yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit me up there with a thumbs up. Share it with all your buddies who are new to this. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all in the new year in the new tutorials. Thanks again, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.